back to another abandoned and historical adventure. As you can see by the looks of this place, uh, it's uh, worse for wear. This place is known as Concrete City. It is a housing complex that was built for employees of the Truesdale Quarry Company, which uh, I don't know if I pronounced that right. It was a, a coal mining company and it was built by the Delaware, Lukewarner and Western Railroad back in 1911 for, like I said, the employees. Uh, there's 20 homes here, there are duplexes, so 40 families were selected to live in this housing complex. And as you'll see, that really didn't last too long. The, the families were upper management, higher level employees, and one of the requirements to living in these uh, homes is they had to speak English. So that ruled out a whole bunch of people as back in the early 1900s, it was first generation immigrants who were here, so they didn't speak the language, so that ruled them out. I believe there was close to 1,200 employees, 1,100 and something, give or take, and 40 families lived here in Concrete City. The whole project was abandoned in 1924, and we're gonna get to the root of the reason why. And you're gonna come along with me, and when I say we, I mean you and me, so let's dive right into it, guys. Come on. So guys, in coming into Concrete City, you're greeted by this like little makeshift shrine. Uh, so I imagine somebody must have died here. Um, I'm not sure of the reason why. Maybe it was an accident, maybe it was an overdose, maybe uh, it was a crime, I'm not sure, but this has been left here. And look at this, this is creepy. Damn, my jacket keeps making that noise. <laughs> But look at this. I don't see a name or anything like that, but. Oh, look at this, guys. I'm just uh, coming up on a few of the buildings as you see. Sorry for the shakiness, I'm kind of going down a hill right now. Wow. This is really cool. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a lot of awesome history. And as you can see, left to rot and a haven for graffiti artists and maybe not so much the artist. All right, I haven't taken you down into the main courtyard yet. It's a little damp. So we're gonna go around the side and see if this is a little bit better to show you what the center courtyard looked like. And in the center of these homes was a pool and a ball field. I believe the pool has since been filled in, but we may be able to see remnants of where it used to be. I mean, look at this. Can you imagine this was your house made out of concrete, damp to the elements, cold, drafty, no plumbing. You had to go out back to your concrete outhouse. Look at this, isn't this incredible? There's uh, some open land way in the back, so you might hear somebody riding around on a quad. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to come through here. Hopefully not. But before we actually enter into one of these houses, one of these concrete houses, see if we can find where the pool would have been. I'm guessing it probably would have been in this cluster <laughs> or in this cluster right here. But um, I guess we'll have to take to the air to find that out. Wow, this is really, really cool.
there's a vehicle over here that's obviously been abandoned or left here or stripped or i'm not sure but this is obviously something else that has not been here since 1924 but there is something kind of artsy about it Ooh, it's wet look at that basements right there. I have to turn my light on for that. So as you can see, it's been tagged up beyond belief. Let's see what the upstairs looks like now. Like I said, this place was built 20 houses and a duplex. So it could house 40 families out of, I believe, almost 1,200 families and only 40 of them were selected to live in these homes. So, so this is the upstairs. Gaping hole right there, but there would have been bedrooms up here and I mean, I can't imagine living in a, in a concrete home. I mean, it is pretty solid, but yeah, <laughs> cold, damp, drafty. I mean, it, it feels pretty raw. I can tell you that. Look at this. I can't even imagine living in a concrete structure. Uh, it, it does feel damp. I mean, it has been, uh, it's damp outside, so, but it is kind of chilly in there. <laughs> There's somebody walking around playing paintball. Look at this. All these houses were constructed exactly the same, all in a big circle. And in the center, it had a pool and some gardens and um, I believe a ball field. Obviously, it's hard to imagine that now considering the overgrowth. They referred to it, I believe, as a garden community. So I'm trying to picture it as it was back in the day. Look at this. You can almost see the walkway where you would have walked right into your front door, right there. And no plumbing, imagine that. You had to go outside and use a concrete outhouse. And we'll see if I can find any remnants of that structure. I'm not sure if they're standing today or, or not. We'll find out. But that was the issue. They didn't want to put money into installing plumbing, which would have, at the time, I believe, would have cost over $200,000. So they abandoned the project in 1924, and it's been sitting here ever since. Look at this. Look how thick this glass is right here. This probably would have been the glass that was in the windows of these concrete houses. Look at that. That's pretty thick. What do you think? I'm thinking that's, that's part of the windows. Wow. What construction, huh? Unreal.
the style of these homes is called international and this was a new uh, a new style that they were bringing. I guess that's what these concrete houses, uh, that's the style of the houses. <laughs> it's international style. So this was new and they didn't uh, foresee the problems that they were going to have in building concrete homes. I guess they did mix in some, um, I believe the, well, the correct chemicals, if you want to know, will be down below in the description, but I believe they had tar and some other um, chemical or product that they mixed in with the concrete, but that didn't seem to work as far as keeping the moisture out. These homes were very damp and as you can imagine, very cold and they had no indoor plumbing. So I still have yet to find where an outhouse may, may have been. I'm not too sure what that is. But the outhouses were reported to be behind the homes. So maybe we'll see a foundation. When the project was abandoned back in the early 1900s, it was just a matter of cost. $200,000, I believe, was the cost to uh, install plumbing into the outhouses. And, wow, it's raining. And the new owners, or I believe there were new owners, they were going to level the place and they took 100 sticks of dynamite and tried to blow up the homes and they still stand today. They were pretty much indestructible to the dynamite. I mean, this really is a beautiful area and here it sits wasted, but I guess it's a national landmark and sadly, this is what it looks like today. And it's been sitting here, can you believe it, since 1924. Look how blown out this one is right here. Maybe this is one of the houses that they actually uh, hit with the dynamite. I mean, this can't be natural. <laughs> but yeah, so they still stand today. After 100 sticks of dynamite, almost 100 years of natural decay of being out in the weather and the elements. Pretty thick. Look at that concrete. Imagine how cold that would have been in a Pennsylvania winter. All right, guys, so I'm kind of heading over to another location to show you. But before I leave, I happened to notice there was this plaque over here. Oh my God, I became one of them plaque people. I have to show you that. <laughs> All right, but here you go. So this is what it says right there. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go head back.
Aqueduct, the Delaware and Lukawana and Western Railroad that built Concrete City, further built this viaduct in 1915. Look at this. This is crazy. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this concrete adventure and uh, I will see you on the next one. Where'd the road go? It's, it's like, it's dark.